trouble. You believe in God, believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If it were not so, but I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me. That you also may be where I am. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or farming or nakedness or peril or sword? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, no angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor death, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of Christ, our Lord. Yes, Lord, from the bottom of my heart and to the depths of my soul, yes, Lord, completely my soul says, yeah, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not walk. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me to side still waters. The Lord is our refuge and our strength. A very present help in the time of trouble. Mm -hmm. My soul says yes why don't you lift your hands in the presence of the Lord? I love you I love you from the bottom of my heart unto the depths mm, I love you I really So says yeah. We want to extend a welcome to all who have gathered here to support this family and to offer prayers and to undergird them in this this weighty hour in their journey in life. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. He who believes in me, though he dies, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His compassion never fails. Every morning they are renewed. I am sure that neither life nor death no angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. If we live, we live to the Lord. If we die, we die to the Lord. So then whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For the descent, Christ died and lived again, 
that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. We brought nothing into this world and we take nothing out. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Would somebody bless the Lord's name in the house of worship today? Come on. Bless the Lord's name in the house of worship. If he's worthy of praise, if our God reigns throughout the universe, if he sits on the mountain top and the earth is his footstool, why don't you clap your hands real good and bless the Lord in this house? Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. 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 Glory be to God Almighty. As Reverend Curry comes now to lead us in our invocation, we speak comfort and we speak encouragement into the atmosphere. Father God, it's in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, that we humbly approach your throne of grace. As we come, Father, to celebrate the life of young Rashid, God, we Invite your Holy Spirit in this place today, oh God. God, we know that you are a great comforter, so we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, that you will release your comfort upon the family right now. God, help them to realize, oh God, that Rashid, Rashid has began a new life because the end of this life is the beginning of a new life. And so we invite your Holy Spirit to dwell with us, oh God. We ask their Father, that you will touch the man's servant that will be breaking the bread of life, God. Because as we come, we don't know who next, who will be the next one, oh God, that the grimy hands of death will come upon God. But we ask that you will allow your spirit to rest in this place and comfort those that are mourning, oh God. And so we say thank you right now, God, for what you're doing in the midst of the family, among the family, and even in the midst of those that are attending this funeral. Let your spirit, oh God, be our guide. And we ask the God that you will take full control of the entire service and let your will be done. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Can someone say amen? Amen. I can't hear you. Amen. The greatest story that I've ever heard was the greatest story that was ever told. That is, Christ save sinners. I don't think you heard that, amen? amen. He saves sinners. So if there's anyone in here today, amen, that needs to make it right, we need to make it right. My mom calls, she says, uh, I felt such a pain in my heart, She's such a pain she said she felt. And it's amazing that how mothers, when they sense something, and they feel something. But I want you to know that God got you, sis. Amen. He got you. Amen. He got you. He saw this. He wasn't blind to this. Wade, God got you. Amen. He got you. Amen. The Watson family, God bless you. The deans, we welcome you. We welcome guests. And we welcome you all. I want you to put your hands together for the Lord Jesus Christ who saves. Amen? Come on. He saves. Amen? He's in the saving business. He's in the saving business. We're going to open up with our hymn, The Last Mile of the Way. Amen. The Last Mile of the Way. Um, you can stand except for the immediate family. Just... Sing that.
Hallelujah. I will rest at the close of the day. And I know there are joys that await me when I've gone the last mile of the way. Someone, look, can we give God a praise in the house? Amen. Can we praise God in the house? Amen. Come on, someone, lift those praises to God. Amen. Lift those praises to God. Let's bless Him. Let's bless Him. You know, as my sister was visiting the hospital and praying over her son, and she was praying with him, and I had the opportunity to pray with him speaking over him, declaring over him. But what mother gets a chance to actually bring to birth, first birth, and get a chance to lead into the second birth, her son? Oh, you didn't hear what I just said. That's incredible. And I would suggest vehemently that you make that decision today. Amen. Can someone say amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. So we plead the blood of Jesus over them today. We plead the blood of Jesus over this family. As we welcome the auntie Alicia Boros with our Old Testament reading this morning. Let's welcome her as she comes. Come on. Let's welcome her. Alicia Boros. Amen. With our first scripture reading. Praise God. Isn't God good? Sometimes, no, he's, he's good all the time, isn't he? All the time, God is good. Good morning, church. Old Testament reading will be coming from Psalms 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in Him I trust. Surely He shall deliver me from the snare and the follow. From the noisome pestilence, he shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. He shall shield, he shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor that the arrow that flyeth by the day, nor shall the, 
nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, ten thousand at thy right hand, but thou, but it shall not come nigh to thee. Here ends the reading. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let's put our hands together in this place tonight, today. Amen. Let's bless the Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, Rashid, his, his name means rightly gu guided. Rightly guided. And basically, of course, I told you what happened at the hospital. I told you that. So in the end, he was rightly guided. Can someone put their hands together as we thank God for the life of Rashid Watson. Amen. You know, I told him, of course, I said to my sister, I said, uh, don't call him Sheedy. Call him Rashid because his name means rightly guided. Amen. So let's bless the Lord. Amen. Coming with our second reading. Our second reading. We have Keon Dean. He's the uncle. And the second reading will be coming from Romans chapter 8, 26 through 28. Amen. Rashid. Well, my cousin, Keon, the uncle of Rashid Watson. Bless you. Good morning, church. Romans 8, 26 to 28. Likewise, the Spirit also helped with infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself make it intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he make it intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know not, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. And the reading. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the living God today. I mean, God is amazing. Even in this, God is amazing. He is amazing. Can we give a hand praise for this amazing God that we serve and that amen hallelujah coming with a liturgical dance we have Paige Dossett Paige Dossett is she here uh, cousin amen cousin Paige we're paging Paige amen paging Paige amen hallelujah bless the Lord as he comes and ministers to us in the dance.
you afterwards but I know one thing God will keep you he will keep you my sister he will keep you Wade keep you Reginald he will keep you Rishonda he will keep you Wade Jr. he will keep you my family watching family amen Come on, let's thank God for them. Let's thank God for them. Amen. Thank God for them. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I'll fly away. I'll fly away. Amen. Hallelujah. I'll fly away. So can we stand? Immediate family can be remain seated.
Bar. God good even when we're in the midst of sadness God is good and he's keeping her he's keeping this family and he will make sure that you're okay amen hallelujah come on someone put their hands together for this God that we serve amen hallelujah bless the name of the Lord uh, this time of course we'll have pastor Ivan D Roll senior with the gospel Can you stand for the reading of the gospel, please? Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whether I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. The Lord's word is blessed. Amen. Indeed it is. A hallelujah. He is the way. Someone says, I don't know the way, but you just was told, and you're hearing, that Jesus is indeed the way. Amen. Hallelujah. And I would ask uh, someone, well, what do you think about this? Well, Jesus is the answer. Uh, Jesus is the answer to everything they say. So everything, he is the answer. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. So his name, second name means defender, warrior. Amen. Defender, warrior. Isn't that powerful? Isn't that powerful? And we have a musical tribute at this time. Jasmine Key. Cousin. And Dan Danielle Dean. Friend. It's the duet. Amen. Hallelujah. Musical tribute at this time. Are they here? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Can someone bless the name of the Lord today? Amen. Hallelujah. As she comes. 
with a tribute. Let's bless him. Amen. Hallelujah. Good afternoon. I'd like to offer my sincerest condolences to the family and loved ones of the deceased this afternoon, and I hope that this song brings you comfort. I've seen a lot of things that you're able to do. But nothing compares to the miracle of you. And I've seen blind eyes open. I've seen the lame get up and walk, walk, walk. But you saving my soul is the greatest miracle of all. The miracle is you. The miracle is you. Not just what you can do the miracle is you and I thought I needed healing when all I needed was your love your love and all that I was looking not just what you can do the miracle is you the miracle is you the miracle is you not just what The miracle is you. Cause you are the miracle. You are the miracle. Everything I've wanted. All that I've been searching for. You are the miracle. You are the miracle. just what you can do the miracle is you
the miracle is you. You know, with some movies a long time back, Nora Lamb, and it had to do with trust. Had to do with trust. And this person went to the underground, underground church, and this is the message he gave. He says, our Lord has asked you to trust him one day at a time. One day at a time. Hallelujah. One day at a time. You can come now. Amen. It wasn't all to do it. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Danielle Dean. Amen. Let's praise God for that. Let's give him a hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Coming with as I knew him. Justinique Smith. Schoolmate. Oral King. Also schoolmate. Thank the Lord as they come. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. It all started in 2013 when I went to see Bethel. I went there not knowing anyone, whilst everybody already knew each other from their SC days. I'm like, this is going to be long, because knowing me, I'm going to stand by myself and not say anything to anybody. So here comes the times for everyone to choose their electives. I say, you know what? Let me think about when exam times come. So I'll go for the easiest class. I chose needlework. While standing on the line for the two needlework teachers to decide who are going in the class, I noticed these two guys, one being Rashid. They came up behind me, rushing to get in the class that I was being placed in. I'm like, what are they on this line for? As we enter the classroom, I'm now looking for where I'm about to sit again. I noticed these same two guys closer and closer to the area that I'm headed to. I'm like, huh? So I then decided to pick up any chair now how you all think they sit down to the table facing me? If anyone know me, I'm a very shy person. So I'm then beginning to get nervous with my head held down. A few minutes in, I then receive a note from Rashid's friend saying, my friends, they tell you hi. I say, Lord, I must have looked lonely outside for really. All I could have done is laugh and say hi. But from that day on, me and Rashid became very close as if we knew each other for a very long time. It even got to a point where if someone see me and don't see Rashid, they like wear a shadow because I know he ain't far. Break times on lunch times, I would be the only girl by the bench many times with Rashid and his friends, and those were the best times. Brandon, Miko, Blair, Harry, Shelton, Kenny, and others, they could tell y'all, if you know Rashid, you know he's filled with joy and laughter. Even on his sick bed, I remember one of the days I visited him. I say, hi, Shitty. He said, hello. Any time he was around, all he would do is laugh all day. I wouldn't talk about his laugh or that laugh. That laugh alone would have you hollering. Sometimes she couldn't even catch herself from his own laugh. Let's talk about the Kipling monkeys. Anyone here remembers? If you have a Kipling monkey on your bike, don't let Shitty see it because that's his. Shitty came to see Bethel with one monkey on his bike and graduated with about 30. You all ever heard the saying, short people are always the bossy ones? Shitty was always the, short, the shortest out of the crew. But all that was everyone's daddy, because when he come with the saying, but yeah, I ain't gonna lie, I ain't gonna lie, that one call over. Shitty always made sure his boys, who he called his brothers, were straight. He never left them out. Down to a ride home from school, sometimes Shitty would normally catch a ride home with me because he lived a few minutes away from me. One evening, she did bring all his boys, everyone hopped on the back of the truck. Mommy said, well, Jesus, where all these people go in? She did say, they straight, they straight, they're my brothers, all of them going right on my good. He always looked out for people he called his friends. Rashid Alexander Watson will be missed by everyone that knew him. He was a great person. He meant a whole lot to everyone. Cherish the moments you shared with Rashid. Let's not forget the laughter, love, and joy he brought into our lives. May his soul rest in peace. Well, um, <clears throat> I ain't gonna keep you all too long, but um, I know Shady a long time. You know, and when we was in school, I wasn't none of them famous type of dudes, you hear me? I was the one who was trying to fix things and, you know, um, the nerdy one, halfway nerdy. And Shady ain't never styled me, you know? He, 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 he used to tell him, wait, that's John Doe, wait, y'all, what? If John Doe can't sit by the table, I ain't, well, well everybody got to move. And then we grew up. I go into the state, and she did call me one day. He said, we are all boy. I ready to come foreign. So I said, yeah, man, you come foreign. And we had all kind of mishaps. The flight, 
supposed to be from Nassau to Orlando, but they booked Shady Wife for Nassau to Miami. So he like, mother sick, or like, yeah. I said, boy, coming for you, boy. And I drive three hours with my boy, Dre. I ain't even know she had kids, man. I, I, I just got out of the feds, like Christmas, a week before Christmas. She didn't even know I had kids. And for me to see my boy in this, in this if I could tell you all, but she didn't ever leave my side, bro. From the first day I bring him to the stakes, from the first day I meet him, Essie, she didn't never, never this. He ready to go on anything, you know? And like, it, it, I think this is a wake up call for me because. The life I live in, I still here. My boy was so nice, man. Like, she'd give you his shirt off his back. See what I'm saying? Like, but I know he in a better place now, though. He used to tell me to do right, though, and something some had to been wrong with me. He, he used to sit on my bed with my white girlfriend. He used to be like, boy, all right, boy, you gotta chill out, but your old lady love you. And, this girl love you. I said, but shit, I ain't gonna run, but I ain't foreign, but I ain't gonna run. And he used to plead with me. He used to be like, you know what? If you ain't gonna listen, I can still pray for you. I said, mother's sick, dread. And I was thinking about that all night last night. I said, wait, I gotta change my life, dread. <laughs> but I can tell you this, wait. I can tell you this, wait. I got your son till I die, bro. You got your mommy and your sister them. You feel me? You ain't gotta worry about me doing foolishness no more. I promise that. Too. As I said about So let the light guide. Your way to hold every memory as it goes, and every road you take will always lead you home. Oh, home. it's been. Without you, my friend, and I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. We've come a long way from where we began. Oh, I'll tell you all about it when I see. It's amazing, it's amazing how a life can touch another life. You know, I was traveling somewhere and someone asked me to jump their car, jump their car. Their battery was dead, their battery was dead. So basically, I, we attached the cables. And I believe some cables are attached today to every heart in here that is seemingly dead. But God wants to bring you back to life again. Amen. He wants to give you life. He wants to give you new, new life. Amen. And at this time, my auntie is coming, Geraldine Dean, with condolences, with condolences. Welcome her as she comes. Welcome her as she comes.
Amen. My Auntie Geraldine. Thank you. Handsome, smart, loving, kind, good brother, good son, good grandson, good father, and a good friend, good nephew. These words describe my nephew. <laughs> to the pastor, our minister, officers and members of the church, our moderator, the bereaved family, which I am a part, ladies and gentlemen, friends of Rashid, good afternoon. You know, this is probably the hardest thing. It is the hardest thing for a mother, a father to do is to bury their child. No one expects to bury their child. We all expect for our child, our grandchildren to bury us. But who are us? Who are we? To question God, he knows all things. And all things give thanks and give praise. So for the years that he was long to us, and I felt, my heart felt so good to hear his friends to say um, what all he did for them and how loving and kind he is. I, his brother is the same way. So I guess that's the way they were raised, to be loving and to help one another. Isn't that what God put us here for? to help ye one another. So that means that his life was not in vain. So ladies and gentlemen, I know a lot of you sitting here thinking, but I don't want you to think and I don't want you to have a doubt. When we found Sheedy in that bed, he called the ambulance. He lie unconscious for a while. I don't know if you know Sheedy Mother Good, but she is a praying woman. This woman's so crazy with prayers, she even prayed for the car in the morning time. She gone to the hospital, and she was there, and she fasted, and she prayed, and her son came too. And she was able to witness to her son. And he said, whatever he's done, God must forgive him. And someone told me he said that all the things that they say he did, he didn't do. But God knows all things, doesn't he? And when we pray and we say, God, fix this for me. When God fix it, we don't understand how he fix it or how he's going to fix it. But whatever he fixes, well fixed. When Charmaine was praying, Lord, fix my son. He fixed it. Because nothing can harm him no more. No more hurt, no more pain, no more suffering. And he came here for a short while, but he did what he was supposed to do. Okay? He did what he was supposed to do. And God gave him the opportunity to say, Lord, I forg forgive me and take my hand. I am coming home. How many of us can have that opportunity? So today you don't worry about who sold gone where and worry about who did what. We all need to pray for ourselves and ask God to have mercy. Bahamas, your young men, you hear the young boy say he changed his life? I need all of y'all because there's nothing out on them streets for you. Nothing on them streets for you, young people. And it hurts my heart to see a young man in trouble. Please, y'all, love one another, protect one another. Stay off the streets. Do something with your lives. My God's own come, you know. I mean, I was supposed to be giving condolence, but y'all young people need to hear this. You may not have the opportunity, so you might walk out there, somebody just strike you down before you say, Lord, have mercy. So Lord, not only you, you know, us too, the older persons, because a lot of times we, we say we, 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 are, we are Christians, but we hate one another, and we do all kind of little nasty things to one another. So this is a wake-up call for all of us. All of us, family, friends, all of us. Okay, so, Wade, Charmaine, Shonda, Shamar, 
really aunties, Grammy, the grandmothers, the uncles, the friends. My sympathy goes out to you. And his son, <laughs> look at his little son. I mean, he looks so much like Rashid this morning, I couldn't believe it. But I pray that his mother bring him up in the fear of the Lord and would never allow him to forget who his father was. And I thank the Lord for being able to be in Rashid's life. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for listening. You guys have an excellent day. Thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. I think she wanted to preach just now. She just wanted to preach. Amen. But God is good. And he'll get his message across however way he will. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Uh, coming with remarks on behalf of the family, uh, Vanita Butler. Vanita Butler is she here. Amen. Vanita Butler. Hallelujah. There she is. Welcome her as she comes. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. afternoon I give God thanks and praise for being in the Watson family. I get to know Watson. We work together. And I get closer to knowing our children. And I get to know Shidi. And every time I see Shidi, I would always say, boy, you're a handsome boy. I always tell him that. And we travel together. We pray together. We did so much together. And Shidi, he was a nice person. If you get to know him, he was so nice. <laughs> and one thing I could say, he had a lot of respect. Yes, mom, no mom. And I could say, he's a big miss. He is a big miss. But in all things, we give God thanks. And I give God thanks for the life that he lived. I could remember February the 2nd, Watson had a little function to her home, and she invited me, and I went, me and my friend. And it wasn't so much us, but I tell Watson, this will, this will God wants to be here today. She had a little get together for her cousin. And she, he got up and he gave thanks to, her, to the cousin, telling her, that he prayed that she'd see many more birthdays. But when I look, she did a shift. And she did said, I am not, he said, I hate my mother and my daddy. But he said, I am not, I'm not proud of what I did. And she said, teens that he did, 
I think it's that he did not do, do, but people still place it on him. And Shady started to talk, and everybody got silence. And I got up, and I went across there to him, and I said, Tidi, you tonight, you testify. I said, listen, I said, God forgive you for everything that you done. And things that you did not do, God still forgive you. I said, don't hold this over you. And he said, yes, ma'am. I said, she, do you hear me? And Watson, she started to cry, and I was talking to him. And I tell she, did God forgive you for every wrong that you've done. I said, right now, as you open up your mouth, God forgive you. And he said, yes. Seven days later, Watson called me and said, she is in hospital. When she called me and told me that, I said, God, this can't be it. But I could say today, she he made it in. He made it right. He made it in. I went by the bedside and I anointed, I anointed him. And he said to me, he said, this Annie Butler? I said, yes, this me. And I said, I come to see you. And I anointed his head and I anointed him. He was bare, he was bareback. And he had on his chest, he had Shami and, and big letters. That's his mother's name. And on his left side, his hand, he had Joshua and big ladders also. And I anointed him. And I started to pray for him. And he said, Annie Butler, this feels so good. So I started to rub his face with olive oil and rub his hair. And he said, this feels so good. And I prayed with him. And I know for sure he made it in. And I say, today, he don't have to worry about nothing. He don't have to worry about nothing. Everything is over. But I tell Watson, she did went in debt. It may sound foolish, but he went in debt. And you know, God save him and take him home. He save him and take him home. And you know, I give God thanks and praise for she life. I could remember she was driving an ice cream truck. And he know where I live in Pastor Garden. And she used to come to every living Sunday. Does he know for sure he can make her $20 from me? And sometimes we ain't want ice cream, you know. But you know what happened? The love. He draw people. That love that he had. And he said, he said, Annie Butler, he said, you know, I have a son now. I said, yeah, man. He said, but you know, I got to wait for him. I said, yeah. And many times, she'd come every Saturday, every Sunday evening after three o'clock when we finish eating. And my two grandson and my daughter and me, we would come and we would purchase the ice cream from Shidi. And sometimes Shidi would give us one over. I said, no man, I, he said, I got this, I got this. And I could say, he got that from Watson, his wife. <laughs> Loved to give. You know, and I say, she didn't know. She didn't say, yes. She said, yeah, just for patronize my business every Sunday. And every Sunday, he used to come there anytime after 3 o'clock. We could hear that, that music coming in the yard. And we then get our little $20 together to purchase the ice cream. And that's the type of person she was. And I mean, and soft spoken, he never, I never hear him shout. And he always had that, that, um, that smile about him. You know, he was very handsome. And I used to keep on telling him, I said, boy, you're a handsome boy, you know. And what he used to do is look at me and smile and shake his head. But I, I mean, and listen here, I miss Shady. I miss him, you hear me? And deep down in my spirit, I knew he was going to pass with me. But I just couldn't even explain it. He was just, he was just in my spirit. And I said, God, I said, I don't think he can make it. 
But through it all, Watson still was praying and fasting, believing God for a miracle. But I could say today, she demanded in Watson, you're going to miss him. Your husband going to miss him. But he is in a better place. He is in a better place. He ain't got to worry about nothing no more. Everything is over with. And I know for sure she would like each and one of us to get to know the master. Get to know him is good to know. It's good to know him for yourself. And I thank God for you, Watson. I could say for this woman right here, she did her part as a mother and also her husband. Everybody might be saying, Watson rough. They might say you was a, a strict mother, but I know why you were strict as I was strict too with my children. And Watson, you did your best. You did your best. Hold your head up high. You did your best. You did all and more. You did your best. And I see what you did for your children. You, nobody had to tell me that I was there when you do for your children. And you may be like, rough them up, but you know why you did it. So continue, continue being strict on your children. Don't care if they're off edge. Continue speaking to them. So Watson, I salute you today, being that mother. I mean, in where he was very quiet, but I know he did his part also. But I can speak for you, you did your part as a mother. <laughs> and I thank God for shady life. Anyhow, that's it. Amen. Hallelujah. Transient. Transient. You know, sometimes we can have a short life, but we could have a, a life full of power. So it doesn't matter how long you live, it's how well you live. And if you live it on purpose, amen. So I would encourage each and every one of you, she these friends, those who connected with him, to really get to know this God that we're talking about today. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Can we praise him? Amen. 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 Come on right now. It's Clemen Penn. He's the cousin. Welcome him as he come. Preparation. Music. Preparation. Music. Amen. Is he here? God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Just before we get into the preparation music, I'm here on behalf of Comfortless Ministries, Pastor Ivan Donald Roll Sr., its leaders and its membership, where the Watson family worshiped. And I could recall Grammy Dean. And I can recall Wade and Charmaine and these two beautiful children, so well-mannered, always in church. And the last time I saw Rashid, he came to church with Joshua and Qtal. And I looked at his face and he was smiling and he, he told me that he, I would be seeing more of him. And I guess I will be seeing more of him in the spirit. But we say we can never get used to that, no matter how many times it comes knocking on our door. And so on behalf of Pastor Roll, as I said earlier, we extend sincere condolences to this family. We are here to undergird you. We will continue to pray for you. And we pray that the God of all comfort and consolation will lift you up and wrap you in his arms as you go through this time. We do love you. Amen. Good. Good afternoon, church. I stand on established protocol, nonetheless, to the one who presides, Pastor Chad Dean, 
to the one officiating, Dr. Ivan Roll, to the angel of this house. Bless the Lord uh, for him and to the bereaved family. I did not know the deceased personally. I know his parents. And it is in life, it is expected that parents, children bury their parents. That's the expected norm. But today, the parents are burying their son, 24 years old. I had a brother, a year older than me, died at age 18, one year short of his, one month short of his 19th birthday. My father died at age 42. And for 10 years, I asked God why. And so I know a lot of you are asking God why. And I know people always say you never question God. I believe it's how you question God. You're not questioning out of disrespect, but you're just questioning out of sincerity. You're just trying to understand it. And sometimes we never understand it. And that's why the song said we'll understand it all better by and by. 24 years old, he, you don't really start to understand life till you get about 30. And then when you get about 50, you think you really got it. And then when you look up, you realize that most of your time have passed you and there's less ahead of you. But it's never too late to do the right thing. And so I've just come to just to, to offer words of comfort. And I can never say I fully understand what you're feeling, but I have an idea because I have to walk that road. This is the path that all mortals must take, all of us in here. This is the path. Hebrews 9 and 27 says, it's appointed unto man once to die, then after death is the judgment. And so for young persons, for all of us, but young persons in particular. At this age, you know, in your teens and your 20s, you think you're going to be here forever. And I'm just talking from my experience. At 20 plus, you know, you just know you're going to be here forever. You think you rule the world. But unfortunately, things happen that's out of our control. But there's something that all of us can control. We can determine our destiny in eternity. And so I just beg of you to use as Rashid's example and to know that life, all of us want to live a long life. All of us desire to live a long life. But that may not necessarily be the case. But we can determine where we spend eternity. We don't talk about it a lot. Churches don't talk about it a lot. And I speak of myself even as a pastor, but heaven and hell is still at the end of it. We preach that, we believe that. And so prepare your souls for eternity. There's a saying that says, death takes the body. It says God takes the soul. The mind holds the memories and the hearts keep the love. And we know, as a people of faith, we will see each other again. So I extend sincere and heartfelt condolences on behalf of my wife and my son and the entire constituency of Golden Isles. May the Lord strengthen you and may he comfort you, particularly in the days ahead, to go through. And that's the real difficult part. Please stay in touch with this family. Lots of times after today, people just drop you. Please, the, the, the real difficult task is ahead of them. 
So please stay in touch to be a source of comfort and a source of strength. And so to his parents, to, to his son, to his grandparents, grandmothers, to his siblings, and all friend, family and friends extended, my sincere heartfelt condolences. May the Lord strengthen you and may he rest in peace. And on that faithful day, be raised in power and glory. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Amen. Come on, let's bless the Lord for him. Amen. Thank God for him. Amen. Is Clement Penn here? Cousin? Clement Penn. Amen. Someone says, death is like thunder. No matter how time, how many times it happens, it still catches you by surprise. Amen. So my sister, my family, love you all. And I know God have you like he took care of me. The passing of my wife, my dad, my uncle. And this was more than a matter of three years. And he kept me one day at a time. One day at a time. Come on, let's bless the Lord. Amen. Now, at this time, we're going to call the man of God, the man of the hour, with the word of God, the word of God. How many know that the word is important? The word is a light unto my feet and a lamp unto my pathway. So we're going to welcome, I want you to stand to welcome him, Apostle Ivan D. Roll, Sr. Welcome him as he comes, man of God, with the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why don't you lift your hands in the presence of the Lord? We know he does all things well. And we honor him in this place of worship today. We magnify and adore his name. Because he's worthy of our praise. We admonish that in all things we are to give thanks. It's the will of God concerning us. And we release peace and comfort in this house. Worthy are you, Lord God Almighty, to receive glory and wisdom and majesty and power and might, strength and riches be unto your name. Hallelujah. I I trust in God, I know he cares for me, on mountain bleak, or on the stormy sea, the billows roll. glorify your name. The billows roll, oh God, you keep our souls because you're watching over us. We thank you for your loving kindness. Oh God, and your mercy that never, ever ceases towards us. We glory in your presence today and always. Thank you for this family that's riding on your grace this moment. Thank you for friends and loved ones who've come 
to pay tribute and honor to this young man laid out before us today. Now God surround us with songs of deliverance. Let your spirit rest upon us. And we'll give you the glory. Give them peace while they wrestle. Thank you for your presence. Give a word that will bring about a divine resolution for them. seated in the presence of the Lord. Our presiding minister to all assemble here to our minister of environment and MP for the Golden Gates constituency, Minister Vaughan P. Miller. God bless you and I just want to beg pardon because he has another engagement, another family to cover. And so if you see him tip out, just pardon him. And then we want to express our heartfelt thanks to Pastor Ellison Grainslade, who has so kindly and graciously <laughs> given us access to his his worship desk and his sanctuary. We bless you, sir, forever grateful. And to this Watson family who has again, like all of us often, has reached another hard stump. One that most of us realize that we cannot easily climb and get over. It's not a quick hurdle because death has a way of ushering us to a strange place. And sometimes we don't know how to deal with it because we're, we're so ready for eternity and hardly anything about living we can get a handle on or a good grip on. But one thing we know for sure, that even when it seems as if God is angry, it endures but a moment. Because in his favor there is life, weeping may endure but a night, but joy comes in the morning. And so since I have been so kind today to lend some of my time to those who brought condolences and who brought remarks, I, I, I would not borrow it back. So as I thought for the last couple of weeks about Rashid, and when he first planted his feet into Comfort House with his mom and, and his father, and, and they came and worshiped and became so attached. And we became so equally attached. And most of the children in Comfort House, they as a matter of fact, all the kids in Comfort House are 
are officially my godchildren. I don't have to stand at the altar. So I want to just give way to allow the minister to leave and greet the family. Mr. Songman, if you could just give me an inch up and give me just a little more highs. I know something that brings all of us to a secure place. And that's the place of worship. Just give me a little more kick, Mr. Salman, and monitors and rob me of some of the lows and just push some more highs. The Lord's my shepherd, I not want. He makes me down to lie in pastures green. You, you could go ahead and worship. He leaded me the quiet is Come on, you can stand to you. My soul he does restore again. Somebody would push your hands as the musicians just ministers through the strings and the wind, the keys. Bless you, Wade, and bless you, Shaman, and bless. Away, Shonda. The Lord's arm is forever stretched. Minister Miller quoted a passage of scripture from Hebrews nine and twenty seven. For it is appointed unto man once to die after the death comes the judgment we all are making ready for our appointment cannot be rescheduled cannot be cancelled and you cannot put a time on it Just for a few moments, I want to talk. I think this is fitting for the family and Rashid. From Job chapter 14. Job chapter 14, and I want to run from verse 1 right down to verse 14. And don't be afraid my message is not as long as my text man that is born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble he cometh forth like a flower and is cut down he fleeth also as a shadow 
and continue it not. And this thou open thine eyes upon such an one and bringest me into judgment with thee. Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? Not one. Seeing his days are determined, the number of his months are with thee. Thou hast appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. Turn from him that he may rest till he shall accomplish as an hireling his day. For there is hope for a tree if it is cut down that it will not, it will sprout again and that the tender branch thereof will not cease. Though the root thereof wax old in the earth and the stalk thereof die in the ground, Yet through the scent of water, it will bud and bring forth boughs like a plant. But man dieth and wasted away. Yea, man giveth up the ghost. And where is he? As the waters fail from the sea, and the flood decayed and dryeth up, so man lieth down and riseth not till the heavens be no more they shall not awake nor be raised out of their sleep oh that thou wouldest hide me in the grave that thou wouldest keep me secret until thy wrath be past that thou wouldest appoint me a set time and remember me. If a man die, shall he live again? In all the days of my appointed time, <coughs> will I wait till my change come? Just a few lines I want to use. Living by the mercy of God. Job in this passage is having issues with the resurrection. He's having a problem because the turns in his life and the events that transpired in his life did not lend to him comfort, tranquility. It did not serve him at the place where he was so certain about progressing or moving or advancing towards something that he had great expectation for. For Job, and should I use this word, I'll help you. For, for Job, God had became, become an enigma. God had become a puzzle. He had become, God became a puzzle in the life of Job simply because what Job was exposed to and what Job knew about God. The attributes and the capacity of God was not relaying in the life of Job. He, he had a problem with the resurrection. He was having a problem with the afterlife. So he was actually, in essence, questioning God at a rhetorical place. He was in in one sense, asking God questions about life. And in the same tone, he was answering those questions. Because the inevitability, inevitability of this whole run was right before Job. 
Job knew that in the sojourn, in his walk on this earth, he knew that the road would run out. Like all of us. With all, with human uncertainty, we are quite aware in our souls that this walk is coming to an end. And in this walk, in this walk that we are taking, that's called life, when it comes to an end, we total up the happenings. And we take the final inventory of what was on the shelf. And we cultivate a memory. And as we cultivate a memory of our walk in the earth, God wants some answers about our souls. After everyone amounts this rustle, after everyone gives their chronicle, after everyone gives their profile, and they, and they give their tributes, can you, as you make your transition, can you answer the questions about the soul? question was being mailed to Rashid. The question is, today your soul is required of you. Well, from testimony, it appears that Rashid could answer that question. Because of our own life experiences, and because we, we pull on God, we, 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 we taunt God, as per se, and we, we, we sometimes nag God to help us. But life takes a turn. The same not to line itself up with lo, I'll be with you, even until the end. When, when the tread doesn't run, matches the fabric. And we ask, the God of our own salvation, the God of our creation. What mean it, the sickness? The last time I checked the doctor, I was in perfect health. A few days I'm back before him, and there's a twist that's not favorable to me. Can I can I talk? Then at this time, I'm wrestling with trying to get my flesh some freedom. And he brings my soul up before me. I'm trying to get my release to continue in the earth, but God is trying to release me and move me into divine transitioning for eternity. 
And one thing I've discovered between time and eternity that I, I might wrestle to remain in time, but there is no wrestling to get into eternity when my soul is pressed right. As powerful as Job was in chapter 1 when chaos started. And, and the Bible says in, in Job 1 and 20, it says, And Job tore off his clothes, bowed down, and began to worship God. That's the template for all of us. When, when the crisis hits, when, when we are offset, uh, it's no reason to go off the beaten path, uh, but to get an alignment uh, to the place where God is requiring my soul. What does he want? What, what does he trying to access out of me the only last standing thing uh, when worms destroy this body yet uh, in my flesh uh, shall I see the Lord can I get somebody in this in this house of worship to tap your neighbor and say neighbor if you're going to campaign for anything uh, if you're going to make a run for anything uh, make a run for your soul So Job is, is having an issue like all of us. <clears throat> because Lord, how come you admonish me that in all things I ought to give thanks? You, you admonish me and you provoke me to fast and to pray. And you tell me in your word, this kind comes not by prayer and fasting. And after all of my discipline. The worst happens. How? Lord, how you expect me to calculate this? <clears throat> I'm doing my best to remain holy. <clears throat> and to stay on the righteous course. But, but you seem to be reneging on your promise. Because this thing ain't, ain't panning out. He said, you might as well leave me in hell until this thing passes over. <clears throat> because how can you look at me in this state and don't respond? Want to acknowledge my wife? Because I want to testify. Over seven years ago, she was diagnosed with cancer. One of the rarest cancer, multiple myeloma. And at the outset, I said, this is that the works of the Lord might be manifested. And I, I was thinking at that point, it's going to go away. God says, no, if it's going to be manifested, the miracle has to happen in the issue. Y'all ain't get me. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm saying too, I'm saying, I'm saying too, to live as Christ, to die is gain. A man that is born of a woman is but a few days. And something has a way of bringing these few days to closure. And I'm so glad in heaven the soul is not young nor old, Pastor. Amen. Can I say that again? I'm so happy that in eternity the soul is neither young or old. Amen. So Job is, as I closed, <laughs> Job is, is wrestling with this reality of impending death and he's trying to he's trying to interpret at the place of his struggles he's trying to get a clear interpretation of the rapture 
Because while Job is suffering, somehow the thought and the belief of the rapture found an escape. Have you ever been to the place where your faith start to fade? Uh, this ain't, uh, that ain't y'all. That happens only in my house. Only happens on the boulevard in my house. Uh, your, your faith never fails because, because, because I don't care what's happening in your life. You got a way of maintaining your belief. Have you ever got to the place where you almost slip? Because you saw the prosperity of the wicked while you were suffering and you almost slipped. I heard the psalmist said, I almost slipped when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. But he said, when I entered the sanctuary, do I have some worshipers in this house? Hallelujah. Can, can somebody go ahead and tap your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I almost slip. Hallelujah. But when I entered the sanctuary, I began to declare, I was glad when they said unto me, come let us go into the house of the Lord. Can I, can I get somebody in this house who knows that there is safety in the presence of the Lord? His, his name is a strong tower. The righteous can run into it and find safety. Can you give God a shout in the house? Job, Job made some heavy statements. He, he concluded on some heavy stuff. Not concluded, but he, he had a thought on some heavy stuff. He said, and you know all of us, we prize our flesh. Hey, y'all don't gonna talk back to me. Let me say it again. The, the average of us sitting in here, we prize our flesh. And when that begins to deteriorate, when we no longer look beautiful and smiling, when we're, when we're unable to, to look in the mirror and have a self-appreciation of who we are, how many of you know that many of us, we go into hiding? I can no longer be public because I'm not presentable. But Job declared, the warmth destroyed this body. He said, yet in my flesh, I shall see the God of my son. Can I get somebody in this? I'm so glad that when we get to heaven, we're going to have a new body. I can't carry this flesh that I live in in the earth into heaven. I'm living at the mercies of God. Sometimes we could resort to believe God just ain't fair. <clears throat> Pastor, I, I used to have problems with this text. The Lord will have mercy on whom he will have mercy on. We call that curry favoring. <clears throat> How, how wicked people could appear to be prospering. <clears throat> and those of us who draw on our line, making sure none of the ink spill. Because if the ink spill, it ain't plumb no more. <clears throat> What are you living for? <clears throat> I pulled myself into council a couple of years ago. <clears throat> because the rat race was death too taxing on my body. It was too taxing on my emotion. It was too taxing on my bones. It was just too taxing. 
And I say, if I come out of this rat race, I probably might be able to do my three score and ten. I might be able to number my days. And while I'm numbering my days, I can incline my heart to wisdom. And I've discovered that even twins don't try to pair themselves all the time. Why am I busy trying to measure up to you? And perpetually my measurement is longer than yours. And so since I'm living, I'm, and so since I'm living at the mercies of God, if you withhold your grace, the Lord's mercies never fail. And for all of us, we can declare, it's because of the Lord's mercy, we are not consumed because some gladiators out there with their conspiracy waiting to floor you. And I, I grew up in the church of God, so I'm familiar with that that song where I stick my sword in the sands of time I don't have brains for war so I ask you that question <clears throat> as I close When my mom died, I was about 2014, that was the hardest place for me. <clears throat> then Pastor Greenslade, the undertaker, took me in this room because I carried the name Pastor with these most expensive caskets. And she said to me, Mom will look good in this. I pulled her aside from the crowd and I said to her, before my mommy died, she told me she got a ride to heaven. <laughs> yes, she told me, don't worry about me, I, I got a ride to heaven. Them angels coming to get me. And I ain't getting up till the shout and the trumpet. She said, this ain't going to rush me to heaven. I, I tell her, this ain't going to rush my mommy to heaven. She, she good. She good. Yeah. She, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. You know, so, so uh, what are you living for? Are you at the mercies? Do you recognize that you live at the mercies of God? And every day he expresses his grace gives you access that's his mercy being expressed what you gonna do after this front row are you gonna backslide or are you going to maintain what God is depositing in you right in here and from today we gather that Rashid has loaned his heart to so many people Would you carry it? Would you carry his love, his kindness? 
would you carry his pleasant spirit? He might have had one or two accidents in life, but who among us didn't have one or two or three accidents in life? Y'all ain't talking back to me. I want to drop this in. I, I didn't want to drop this in, but man looks at the outside. But the God we serve, he goes straight for the gusto. He goes straight for the heart. And in our society today, all of us need to be an example. We just need a communal approach to this evangelism trust. Let all of us run with the mercy of God. Unless family. Your friends die, your neighbors die. Your co-workers die. But when your family crops, I refer to it in my own experience as a different kind of debt. Y'all eh? y'all talking to me? And so we cover this family today as we pray that this word that the Lord has released And I leave this with you. Number every day. If you understand the privilege to walk into a day. And the opportunities God would give you in that day. And the favor that he would open up unto you. This is the day that the Lord has made we shall rejoice and be glad <clears throat> in it if you're here today and you're not saved you have never confessed Jesus as Lord stay with me stay with me Every one of us assembled here today can possibly show, if I call, a birth certificate, a driver's license, a passport. The only person who can present a death certificate in here today, Rashid, and he needs a representative. Now, if anybody else can show me a death certificate in the pew, I go on home. So since you can't show it, you should be ready. I invite you to join us at the ready place. Let me pray with you. Let me pray with you. Only God knew Rashid's date. Job said, Lord, you know my days and my months. But I, but I like, after Job had questioned for so long, Job said, I'm going to wait until my change comes. Anybody ready to wait until your change comes? Because the only one can bring change to whatever you're going through is God.
just before we offer intercession of comfort for the family I want to the family representative who's coming to we need a bottle oh she did it already amen well, we want to call Prophetess Shana Pettifer to come and offer prayers for the family as we anoint them. I want you to stretch your hands towards this family. Okay, you have... Mr. Watson requested a good friend to come. Kai Norwich, come. See. Good afternoon, everybody. Firstly, I want to extend my condolences to the family and grateful for the opportunity to call them my family. Um, I couldn't let the opportunity go without just saying something about my friend and my brother. She was there for me for one of the hardest times in my life when I lost my mother. When I lost my mother, she broke and brought me home and he told his mom and she told me no matter whatever happens, you are my son now. And like that he told me, you are my child. And from then I would always refer to them as mommy and daddy. Before my mommy died, my mommy was a hard working woman. Hard working woman. She'd be like, Yeah, my God, let's chill out today. I said, Yeah, I'm in a problem. Let's get a pickup mommy from work. And we just got get, to just get do little errands with her. Because they small things, man. I had a two dollar car. So my mommy, she always bringing something home from work. So it'd be me and she'd eat. And my mommy in the car, all type stuff in the car. She in the box with a clothes hamper. Garbage bag of this, garbage bag of that. Oh, we gotta carry this, carry that. When we come in town to go home and come with the car, she lifting everything inside. When we put me aside and say, you know what? Stick with him. That's your friend. He helped your mommy. Stick with him. When I told she the mommy passed away, I couldn't even utter the words to say, but mommy gone. Because it happened so fast. He took me home. I never forget. She said, whatever y'all go through, y'all is brothers. Work it out. Don't let woman come between and y'all. So came a time when she introduced me to this girlfriend, cute at the time she was she was pregnant. I remember taking them to the clinic when they found out the jam the baby. She was like, Yeah, but God my little man. Come here, tell you it was a boy. I say, Yeah, but uh, I next I and I'm my little boy too. She looked at me and said, But God, no, but you like too much woman, but God gave you a little girl. And lo and behold, I have a daughter. And I was blessed with the opportunity for him to meet up. So it'd be dying when they be like, oh, I'm on the road. Cause I'm a very busy person, I'm on the road. I say, wait, what you doing, my car, baby? I said, I got a little mom with me, be on the road doing little runs. He said, yeah, baby, I got a little mom with me, so baby, saw that, let's go, we be riding around. I'm an entrepreneur, so I on the road working. She did with me, our kids in the back, I look back. I said, but look at me and you in the back there just doing foolishness. Hey, look at the two kids just playing. Couldn't stop laughing. But to the parents, it's what I said. Mommy, I will tell you today, you ain't lost a child. Heaven is king and angel. It's my brother. Many times I cried to Shidi. Many times. Many times Shidi cried to me. I remember the countless times you get in your little row, you call me, say, Kyle, talk to your boy. And I'd fly there. And me and him round in the car, round. And I said, Babe, don't play it, mommy, babe. Simple as that. I really appreciate the opportunity to say this because I feel like I let my boy down, man. Because the time he called me and I couldn't come, <laughs> I saw him in the hospital. I said, but you can shake back, but no way, the small things. I said, but you coming back. I had to make a run. The next day, you called me. You say, we got your boy calling you. Just come. They ain't gonna let you in the box. Just come for me. 
And the fact that I couldn't be there, and he called me the next day, just break me down, I couldn't even come true. I couldn't believe I missed it. I miss you so much. There's so much plans we had. There's so much stuff we can't accomplish yet no more. There's so much, so much things we had planned. So much businesses, businesses we had planned to do that we can't do no more. So every day, it hurts me, don't you understand? I lost more than a friend today. And I appreciate you, and I appreciate the family and the love you showed me from day one. Thank you so much. Bless you. I want you to stretch your hand towards this family. Amen. Get the grieving family stand and join hands together. Let us pray, Father, we come before your throne of grace and mercy this afternoon to give you thanks, to give you glory to give you honor, to give you praise. There is none like you in all the earth, Father. We honor you, we magnify you, we extol you even as we lift this grieving family to you now, Father. We pull upon Jehovah Shalom, the God of peace. We pull upon the God, the Jehovah Shammah, the God who promises to never leave nor forsake us. We pull upon El Shaddai, the all-breasted one, the one that we can lean on, the one that we can depend on, the one that we can trust in, Father. Father, we ask even now that you would envelop them with your comfort, that you would surround them with your peace. Lord God, we pray even this day that you would give them beauty for your fashions, that you would give them the oil of joy for mourning, that you would give them the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Father, we ask even now, Lord God, that as they weep, they will weep in hope knowing that they will see their loved one again. We pray for the father. We pray for his mother. We pray for his son. We pray for his siblings. We pray for his grandparents, his aunts, his uncles, his cousins, his friends, God. We ask even now in the name of Jesus that you, Lord God, will bear them up even now. You promise, God, that when we are weak, you will give us your strength because your strength is perfected in our hour of weakness and so spirit of the living God. We ask that you would surround them with sounds of deliverance. Even now, Father, hold their tears in the vile, Father, even this day. We ask, Lord God, that you would move upon them, Lord God, that you would let them know that you would never leave them, nor would you forsake them. God, we ask that you would close every gap, that you would close every breach in the name of Jesus. Father, loose your healing even now, Lord God. We understand that you are Jehovah Rapha, Heavenly Father. So we thank you even now that you are healing, that you are delivering, that you are setting free. Spirit of the living God, we ask even now, God, that those in the family who do not know you, that they would make it their business, Lord God, to find you. We know that you are forever married to the backslider, and so we call every member who was backslidden in this family to come home today in the name of Jesus. Father, do what it is that only you can do. Show yourself strong. You are still the sovereign God of the universe. You are still the Holy One. You are still just. You are still faithful. Great is your faithfulness. Morning by morning mornings let them see your new mercies let them see your new grace let them see heavenly father that they can lean and depend on you now father we thank you that when the dark hours come lord god when the memories flood their minds father when they begin to think about his life lord god we ask in that dark time that you would sit with them that you would comfort them that you would be with them father that you would heal their sin their heart this day in the name of Jesus. Father, we praise you and we thank you, God, that when they cry unto you, that you would answer them speedily and that you would deliver them out of all of their troubles. We thank you, Lord God, that even as we commit them unto you, that you, Heavenly Father, will touch them even this day. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen and amen.
with your hands lifted, come on. Join us together, Lord. Join us together with cords that can be broken. Join us together, Lord. Join us together, Lord. Join us together. We magnify your Jesus. With my hands lifted up and my mouth filled with rain. With a heart. To go into the committee. Somebody knows that he has done great things. Now I will bless the Lord. Oh my soul, oh my soul, and all, and all that is within me. Bless, bless his whole. Eternal God, you shared with us the life of Rashid Alexander Watson. Before he was ours, he was yours. For all that he has given to us to make us what we are. For that of his, which lives and grows in each of us. And it's life that in your love will never end. We give you thanks. So now, Lord, place your arms of comfort around us in our loneliness. Strengthen us in our weakness and give us courage to face the future unafraid. Draw those of us who remain in this life closer to one another. Make us faithful to serve one another. Give us to know that comfort, peace, and joy, which is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord.
of life we are in death of home may we seek for succor but of thee O oh Lord in home our souls to rest in hope after labor comes reward and rest after struggle peace after life's fitful favor fever this last sleep so it is that we assemble here to commemorate the passing of one who was with us and is no more. We keep in our minds and hearts the memories and the love we knew because Rashid shared his life with us. For as much as it had pleased the Almighty God in his great mercy to receive unto himself, the soul of our dear Rashid, we commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. In sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our earth, able to subdue all things to himself. Amen. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon him and grant him eternal rest. Amen. And amen. We now invite. The family can come now and release your, your roses in tribute. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today because you care for me. In such a special way, that's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. My heart, my mind.
That's why my heart is filled with rain. I need the old. 